Hello and welcome back to my own little kitchen Thanksgiving Day special with me, Angelo. Um, I want to make a, I guess it would be kind of a controversial dish, depending on, I guess, who's making it. <laughs> this is homemade baked macaroni and cheese. <music> Now, everyone has their own way of making it. Everyone has their own way of adding things. Everyone has their own special touch or secret that Nana taught them. Or if you're Italian, Nona. But I have a certain way that I make it and I hope that you will enjoy the way that I present this and maybe you'll like it. All right, so when it comes to baked macaroni and cheese, homemade baked macaroni and cheese, it always is gonna start on the stove. You need for this recipe So to start off with, you need boiled noodles. You want to put them in a colander and then strain them and rinse them with hot water. You want to make sure you always rinse your noodles with hot water um, once they're finished boiling. One trick that I do is I take a ladle and I'll scoop the noodles out, place them in the pot, scoop the noodles out, Place them in a pot um, and repeat that step over and over again until all of the noodles are inside of the pot. You can lift the colander and scoop the rest of the noodles out manually that way and push them all in once the amount is low enough for you to manage. Now this is preferential to whoever is making the noodles. But you can put um, olive oil in there to turn them because you have to season the noodles. It's kind of weird how you have to do this, but you have to do it in layers. So I take oil or butter and I season the noodles, stir it around, and I put my black pepper and salt on this portion. Not a lot of salt, just a little bit of salt. Or if you want to avoid using salt altogether because we have the season to taste when the cheeses come, I recommend that you um, use salted butter. Salted butter will fix that whole situation. So that's what I'll be using. I'll be using salted butter to skip that step, as well as black pepper and parsley. Um, and then you'll toss them in this. All right, so if you're using a smaller box of noodles, um, I'm cooking a much larger amount, so my measurements are gonna be different as I'm going along, but I'm giving you the ones for if you're making this portion for a smaller family or a family on average. Um, you wanna use a tablespoon of butter um, inside of your noodles and if you use an unsalted butter I recommend a fourth of a teaspoon of salt you don't want to use a whole lot of salt because the cheese is going to come with salt now that your butter is in there you're going to stir it all up get everything incorporated I leave this to everyone's discernment of how much they want to use. It might seem like I'm using quite a bit, but I'm making a very large portion of this, which requires 
two boxes of large macaroni. I mean, not the size, but two large boxes of macaroni. <laughs> Now, some parsley. It's a little controversial when people ask me, what does the parsley do? I have no idea. But I have not had a complaint yet when I've done my macaroni and cheese. I made this recipe for weddings and everything. So, folks really enjoy this. And I don't really know what the parsley does. It's really, from what I'm told, a garnish. But for some reason... It does something good in this recipe. I have no idea. <laughs> Don't ask me. It's uh, whatever God oversees the kitchen. That's that. Now, I'm going to set this aside. And I'm going to start making the cheese. All right. Now, when I make homemade baked macaroni and cheese or because I'm half Caribbean um, I would say in the island we make macaroni pie um, I like a very rich base and some people don't understand what I mean by that so some folks will use milk in their recipes but I tend to like to use um, either heavy, heavy whipping cream or I like to use half and half, but not the one that's flavored, just the one that's regular cream. Um, or I'll use some type of buttermilk. The reason why I don't like to use regular milk is because you have to rely on it thickening for when you add the other cheeses. And sometimes the milk can thin it out too much. This is just my personal recipe. Again, you can do whatever you so choose. Take this and... Add whatever you want. That's what recipes are for. That's what homemade means. It means you made it in your home and you can amend things as you so choose. I always tell everyone, please cook your cheese low. Not so low that nothing's really happening, but on the lower side. If you go to medium, hang in the low medium area because one thing you do not want when it comes to macaroni and cheese is you do not want it to taste scorched. When it tastes scorched, forget about it, it's over. So make sure that you're very careful not to make it taste scorched. So we first start with olive oil. Okay. Now, normally in this case, I would add onion to this. It's weird how onion and garlic work for this recipe, as well as smoked flavoring. Now, you're not going to use a whole lot of it, but for some reason, the way it blends with the cheese, it just makes it taste like it's supposed to. I, I can't explain it. I don't know. So, let me get those ingredients together, and we will get to the next part of this segment. Now, if you so choose to use onion and garlic, it is totally up to you. I just feel like personally it gives it a little something, but these are optional things um, that you can try if you so choose. I use a tablespoon of garlic. And if you were to use onion, um, I would use a half a tablespoon of onion powder if you're trying to saute it and get it, you know, whatever you need it to be. Or use um, a fourth of a cup of onions. Now you just wanna let this toast up, become flavorful, get it real fragrant. And mind you, we're, all, we're operating on medium heat because we don't want anything to burn. Now, um, I recommend one block of cream cheese of your liking. Okay. 
Okay. Just whirl that around. Okay. And then you want to add the um, Colby Jack cheese next. And if you have slices, about four sl slices. Okay. If you're doing one box, I recommend two slices. Now, if you have slices like I do, six Velveeta slices. Some folks might have the chunk Velveeta. Those measurements are inside of the description box with the recipe. Now you crank up the heat just a little bit. Let things start melting. Now you want to add your extra sharp cheddar shredded cheese. And that's about a half a cup. Now once everything starts incorporating as this is doing, you want to crank up the heat some, almost too high, so you want to go medium high. Now you want to add in your buttermilk, about a cup of buttermilk, and you want to add my secret ingredient, about a cup of chicken stock. Now you understand why I said you wanted to make sure you didn't add too much um, salt in the beginning because you're adding chicken stock. Although low sodium, you just want to watch it because the cheese has salt in it as well. And put this on high. Let it come to a boil, but you got to constantly stir it to make sure it thickens and becomes creamy. And it will come thicken and come creamy. <laughs> That's the best part about this. It's just this recipe, it, it's just, everyone loves it. Everyone just loves it when they, when they stick their fork in it and they can just taste the flavor. That's why, if you notice, myself and Mr. Michaels, we have this in common where we enjoy seasoning in layers. I can't tell you how many times I've gone somewhere or had something that someone was like, oh, this is my Art Monet of food. And I go to taste it and I'm like, I can tell this does not taste like love. You know, sometimes you taste something that's like, oh, it's a lot of love was put in this. They, no, some of the menus and some of the options do not taste like love. But me and Mr. Michaels, we actually enjoy cooking in layers for that reason because it actually tastes like we put love in it. Because we put time and attention in our passion for cooking. And I think that Seasoning and layers will always help you out in the long run when it comes to seasoning food because it's not going to be too salty. It's not going to be too bland. It's not going to be too spicy. It, as long as you season in layers and continue to do what you're supposed to do, you'll be fine. So now this is starting to melt. So the significance of the cream cheese. Um, the cream cheese is going to make it creamy. The other cheeses, when something is stringy, it still has a solidity to it. It's still solid to a degree, even though it's stringy, like the Colby Jack or something like that, when it goes to melt, I'm saying. But when it melts with something creamy, and then it melts with the buttermilk, and it also has the looseness of the chicken stock as well as flavor, it just creates, I don't want to say a roux, because I don't think that's technically correct, but it creates something that is smooth and creamy but it has like it's full body it's not like a loose it's, it's more like a yogurt texture rather than like a milk texture so you kind of want it to be like a little bit of a loose yogurt texture remember you're also putting this in the oven after this part so you boil the noodles you melt the cheese and then it goes into the oven and you put the topping on top we'll get to that next i don't want to jump too far ahead of myself Now at this stage, I will add a little bit more black pepper. About that much where you can see the speckles at the top. And you just continue to do this. 
Stir it up and let it melt. You want everything to melt. And it's going to get that texture that you're looking for. And at the very end, well, not the next part of it, at the end, I will show you how it looks on the spoon to show you what type of texture it's supposed to have. Please make sure to be mindful to stir. Stir, stir, stir. With increased heat on things like this, you want to stir. I cannot emphasize stirring enough. And you see it's starting to get that texture, everything's starting to melt. Now you're understanding the method of how to make a good cream sauce for macaroni and cheese. And the flavor is everything. When making the crispy topping, if you will, for the macaroni and cheese, be very mindful of how cheesy you want this to be because this is a, a substantial amount of cheese that you're adding inside of it. Different types of cheeses and creams and things. Um, however, some people may not want the topping to be too cheesy. It depends on how you want the pull away to be when they're eating it. Um, if you want it to be really, really cheesy and presently cheesy, a lot of people use mozzarella on the top as well as breadcrumbs. Some people use Cheez-Its or some other type of cheese cracker. Um, I use either seasoned breadcrumbs depending on if I made this more bland, meaning less salt, then I'll use the seasoned breadcrumbs. Um, and that's that. Now another thing is some people use an egg or two when they're making their macaroni and cheese. I'll put that in the recipe as well. I don't use eggs for this, but, um, and quiet as it's kept, I really don't eat dairy or like a lot of meat of the land. I am making this based on how other people in my life eat. So when you see this, this recipe, Angela won't be consuming most of this <laughs> for everyone else. So I'm making this, you know, for the strength of the show. Now I'm going to show you, if you look at this camera up here, I'm going to show you what I mean when I said, see how that's like a loose yogurt texture? It's not too chunky. And when you cook, the water that's in it will begin to reduce. So at this state, when it's slightly bubbling, you want to be certain to add the noodles to this mixture. It's smart to add the noodles into the cheese mixture before placing it inside of a pan because you do not want to have more noodles than cheese mixture. So add your noodles and incorporate them into the cheese mixture because then you can always stop ahead of time when you feel like you've added enough noodles. Now I turned the heat off on this. The steam is plenty as you can see and it'll keep everything hot and the noodles are gonna go in now. All right, so I got my measuring cup and I will start to scoop the noodles into the macaroni and cheese. And I want to stir this as I'm going along. Things might start to stick. Again, you don't want that scorch smell to get into your food. So keep stirring. Please be sure to stir as you go along. I cannot emphasize stirring enough. Now remember, when you add your salt, and you're stirring, and you're mixing, whatever what have you, be sure that you're seasoning to taste. You do not want to just throw salt in there. Season to taste. All right, so now we are going to put it inside of a pot, I mean, sorry, inside of a pan, and we're going to create the topping that everyone's gonna crunch into and enjoy. 
All right, so now is the part where we try to get to the finale <laughs> of all this cheesy goodness. All right, so what I do is I always put oil in my pan. I just always put it in my pan, make sure it's not going to stick at the bottom. And I always put a little bit of chicken broth at the bottom with the oil. Okay, then I'll just whirl it around like so, just so there's something moist at the bottom of the pan. That's just what I do. Again, you can do yours the way you like. Now you just take this and you just start filling. Everyone has that one relative that thinks that they know what they're doing and they really don't. And you have to say to them, listen, this ain't going to be a big hit at the party. So let's not. <laughs> and say we did. No, but I'm just playing. Everyone can cook the way they so choose. It's just, that's not my ministry when it comes to trying to, uh, yeah, now, make macaroni and cheese. And as you can see at the bottom of the pot, very little burn to it. You got to make sure you do not scorch it. All right. Now, you're going to take, I personally do two layers. Okay. You're going to take, shake off the breadcrumbs, make sure it's all good and coated. Okay. Shake off the breadcrumbs. Make sure it's good and coated and do the same thing with the other one. Okay, you're just gonna rub the top like this. All right, then you're gonna take your cheese, your sharp sprinkle cheese, and you're gonna sprinkle it on top. Okay. All right, and you can save it for the other one. You're going to take a little bit more breadcrumbs, not a whole lot, and just go over just to make sure that when that cheese melts, it's kind of locked in. You don't want just loose cheese on the top like that. It's just weird to me. You can do whatever you want. If that's your destiny, enjoy that. But for me, it doesn't work like that. Now, this is finished and ready to go into the oven. When it comes out, it will be delicious. And it will have a whole lot of gooey, cheesy goodness. Now, I hope you enjoyed my macaroni and cheese recipe. This is Angelo with My Own Little Kitchen. Reporting to do a Thanksgiving special. I hope you enjoy it and I hope you're having a festive holiday.